Hello fellow gunners, Tim here at the Reloading Bench. I'm going to still be loading the uh, 410 powder. And we're still doing the 357 with the 170 grain cast RCBS uh, semi-wad cutter. With traditional and powder coat. <clears throat> but I've got something different going on right now. Alright, what i got going on different here is... I've got my 38 special seating die. Remember in the last video I talked about my RCBS, my new one for my 357, <clears throat> having a tapered crimp. Now the 350 or the 38 special has a row crimp. So uh, let's see if we can't put a real decent row crimp on this and see if we can't get get this to burn a little more consistent. I'm gonna be loading the 3.9 up to uh, ten and a half grains and uh, point three grain intervals and I think that might be right where we max out pretty sure we're going to start seeing what's closer to 357 pressures now Wipe off the lube and I'll give you a good view of it. There we go. Oh, what do you think of that crimp? That ought to be a real good crimp. Oh yeah, you can see it real good right there. That ought to be just a case right there. Uh, so like I said, we're going to be going uh, 9 .3, 9 .6, 9 .9, 9, uh, 9.3, 9.6, 9.9, 10.2, and 10.5. Uh, and I'm pretty sure I've kind of estimated that 11 grains is going to be my max but once I hit 10 and a half we'll see from there uh, JCM 45 has been kind of helping me with this uh, you know he's a he's a shotgunner <laughs> so he's telling me what his shotgun data is showing and we're kind of figuring this out I think we're going to get it but I'm hoping that road cramp on that 38 special is going to help. So guys, just like last time, I'm going to have uh, 25 traditional and 25 powder coat. And we'll just see what happens. I'll see you at the range. Hopefully I'll get some range footage in this time. Which I'm pretty sure I will. Alright guys, we're at the range. I'm going to be shooting these 357s. Gonna start out with uh, now these are my 170 grain semi wad cutter RCBS. Now these are going to be uh, uh, what is it? Small pistol primers and CCI. I don't remember the number right now, but we'll talk about that later. Now this is going to be 9.3 grains of 410. Got my corner graph set up there. Mm. 
Got an error. Got an 852. A 969. 941. 948. That was it. Alright, that was traditional with the gas check. Now we're going to do powder coat without a gas check. 9.3 grains of 410. Got an 821 on that first one. And an 848 on the second one. Eight forty three. Ooh, seven thirteen. Eight ninety. All right, guys, this is going to take too much time if I keep going on like this. So I'm just going to go ahead and shoot these, record it, and I'll get back to you on the bench unless something comes up, and then I'll be back. But, uh, yeah, my consistency is still not good. Hopefully with more an increase in powder, we'll get better. We'll actually start getting into some velocities that uh, will be good. All right, guys, I'll see you back at the bench. Welcome back, guys. Well, I'd like to say I've got some good news, but I don't. This the whole video's been a fiasco. <laughs> it has just been trouble from the start. I, uh... The very first part of this video, I actually filmed three months ago. <laughs> okay. And, uh, okay, I, I'm just going to get in on this mess here, guys. It, uh, all, our loads are, uh, three, 9.3. See, I can't even talk. It, this video is so bad, I can't even talk. It's that bad. Uh, but anyway, I'm using 410, Alliant 410 powder. Trying to find a load for it. Now, you know in my previous videos, go back, check them out. Some of you know, some of you don't. That this powder seems to be so inconsistent. I just, I... I, I, it just, I, it's terrible. <laughs> and today, I finally chronographed it, and I can tell you how bad it is. I can show you. Uh, but anyway, our first load is with 9.3. Second load is 9.6. Third load is 9.9. .9. Our fourth load is 10.2. And our fifth load is 10.5. Now, I've shot, and this is with a 170 grain semi wad cutter or CBS mold. Uh, the first five groups are with a uh, gas check, traditionally lubricated. The next five, the same powder charge, are powder coated without a gas check. And these were shot out of my Rossi 4-inch. Uh, like I said, you know I've had inconsistencies in the past. I've even changed primers. I went from S and B, thinking that, okay, could be the primers. So I went to uh, 
500 small pistol primers in CCI. Okay. So, still having inconsistencies. Even with the higher charges. I was going to average these up, but they are so bad that... All right, I'm going to give you an example. Uh, in the 9.6 grains with the powder coat, my first shot was 921. My second shot was 922. My third shot was 777. <laughs> my fourth shot was 827. And my fifth shot was 861. Uh, that's a difference of at least 150, if not more. Yeah, just about 145, looks like. Okay. Uh, but yeah, this, this thing, even if, even when I go up, I've still got uh, here, here at uh, 10.5 grains, I've got a, uh, the first shot is 893, 872, alright guys, <laughs> yeah, this video just keeps, I don't know, <laughs> uh, okay, so, a little intermission there. Between what I just got through saying to now, <laughs> I uh, crunched some numbers and uh, I've done my average velocities and my extreme spreads. Okay, on the uh, traditional load with the 9.3, I had an average velocity of 931. And the extreme spread of 99. Then uh, I wrote some numbers down, but I wrote the wrong numbers to start with, and I can't read what I wrote, so we're going to skip over the 9.6. 9.9 had an average of uh, 907 with an extreme spread of 101. On the 10.2, uh, I had an average velocity of 963 and a uh, extreme spread of uh, 98. On the 10 and a half grains, an average velocity of 839, an extreme spread of 130. Okay, now with the traditional 9.3, <clears throat> I had an average velocity of 8.23 feet per second and an extreme spread of 177. <clears throat> with the 9.6, I had an average speed of 8.61. An extreme spread of 145. On the 9.9, uh, .9, at an average velocity of 888. An extreme spread of 246. On the 10.2, uh, at an average speed of 864, an extreme spread of 86. And on the 10.5, at an average speed of 917, an extreme spread of 233. And uh, like I said before, when I shot these loads before, and I don't think it, we worked up to these loads, we were working up to these loads, but I could always tell that it was inconsistent because of the 
the sound. I could tell. And uh, I would show you the target, but it, it's just confusing and nasty. It's just totally nasty. There's, there's just holes all over the place. So no need to even worrying about that. The accuracy just is horrible. With an extreme spread of 233, uh, I wouldn't expect any different. <clears throat> but now if you guys noticed when I was giving out the average velocities on the traditional, the velocity was going down as the powder charge was going up. If you guys noticed. Now on the powder coat, if you noticed, the speeds were actually going up like they should. But my extreme spreads was getting bigger. Like uh, on the 10.5, my highest velocity was 1,007. My lowest velocity was 774. So, if there's any hope for this uh, Alliant 410 powder, it's going to be in the form of a uh, Magnum primer, I'm, I'm just pretty sure. Uh, there was unburnt powder just flying everywhere. It, it, was, it was horrible. So, here's what I'm thinking. I don't think I need to increase my powder charge, because if I can get all the powder to ignite... I'm going to get, I'm going to see velocities around 1,000 to 1,100 feet per second. If I can get all the powder to ignite. So I, I don't think adding any more powder is going to make it any better. And looking at the casings, there is, is not a bit of, of pressure issues in any of these like I said if I can get all the powder to burn it, it will be a, we're going to see some better velocities and we're going to see some, some higher pressures so I don't think I'm going to increase until I get some magnum primers and see how they do uh this powder is just not working <laughs> like I want it to. And what's really bad about that is it works really well. It meters really well in the uh, Uniflow. So, all right, guys. I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.